Hey everybody, this is Rich, and you're with South Florida Beekeeping with Rich. Uh, so if you look up for a second, for anybody who's keeping count, this is swarm number five in this particular swarm trap in the avocado tree this year. Um, because of what happened in the uh, bucket trap over on the shed a few weeks ago, when a big colony moved into one of these bucket traps instead of a small colony like they're supposed to. I'm going to bring this down and take a quick look. I watched them here this morning. There is pollen coming in, so we're past uh, scout activity. I'll back up for a second and say that Wednesday there was no sign of scout activity anywhere on any trap in this yard. Thursday, I wasn't out here in the morning, but I was out here early afternoon before the rain and there was no sign of scout activity. Uh, did not come out for a late afternoon investigation. Friday morning, it looked like a, sl a small swarm had moved in, but I wasn't sure whether it was scout activity or not. So I came out this morning and sat there and watched for a while and they're bringing in pollen. So we're past the scout activity point. Their young swarm has moved in. Now, I would love to just be able to bring this down and dump it straight into a box at this point if we have a laying queen. If a virgin queen has moved in here, then I don't want to mess with them for a couple of weeks while she goes out and gets mated, etc., etc. So we're going to bring it down. We're going to take a quick peek because I don't want to repeat of what happened a couple of weeks ago with that bucket over the uh, storage shed where we had to cut foot, more than a foot long comb. So let's just see how big this is and what their point is. Okay, I can tell it's light. No, oh, it's just a nice size. I'm tilted. Four That's four paddles of comb. In two days. In two days. Okay. Beautiful and white, though. Too, too tender to want to do anything with. Hmm. Okay, well, I just went and lit a smoker, and we're going to see if we see eggs. Oh my, that was, see what I just did? Well, I just tipped it slightly sideways, which is a complete no-no, and several of the combs tilted. So I just put them back up straight, but I did not see any sign of eggs in there. So I have to assume we have a virgin queen 
And so we're going to have to leave them where they are, and I hope none of those pieces fall down before they have a chance to reattach them. <laughs> Look where the forages are coming back to. <laughs> to the branch right out in front. And yeah, if anybody's noticing, I did not snap the lid back down. I don't want to even give them that much of a shock right now. I'll come do that in a couple of hours when they've had a chance to reattach this stuff. All right, so this one goes back up to give the queen a chance to go out, do her mating flights, and come back. Well, it's going to come down some when the whole thing gets adjusted here. Okay. Okay, that's it for now. I guess you'll see this as a video in a few weeks when we do the whole thing. You're going back in. Well, of course. Say that. Well, the foragers that were congregating on the branch out front are going back inside. How long are we going to leave it? Uh, we're going to leave it there for at least another week. Then we'll check it again. And if the queen has come back and mated, then we have a new colony. If the queen fails, I will probably add these bees to the other uh, little box that I put those queen cells in. Because I know, I know now he's not there, but earlier when I was out here, there was a long green lizard hanging out on the branch right there getting his breakfast and I don't mind losing the occasional uh, bee to the lizards but I don't want to lose the queen but it could happen <laughs> so we'll probably cut this part out if we make a longer video this is Rich this has been South Florida beekeeping with Rich like and subscribe and see you all later hey everybody Rich here South Florida beekeeping with Rich uh, so continuing on with our discussion, which you would have just seen a moment ago, uh, it's been a week now. Today is June the 4th, Sunday, June the 4th. It's been a week since uh, we last looked at this bucket. So hopefully by now we've got uh, a mated queen in here and she's laying eggs and we're good to go. And we're just going to get this uh, taken care of. And the only reason this is going to be worth showing you, since you've seen us do bucket cutouts before, is because I've been uh, processing out some old combs mid-spring, a good time to do that. And I've recovered a number of my old rabbit wire hooks uh, that I started out using many years ago, back when I was doing top bar hives because this was the best solution when all you have is a top bar for hanging for doing cutouts and hanging combs and I just continued to use them for many years because they work so well but the amount of effort it takes to set up a couple of these is way beyond you know just using some rubber bands so except for the fact that I have them I wouldn't bother today I guess but some people might find them useful, and of course, if you're going to do top bars, this is, in my opinion, the best way to do a cutout and transfer it to a top bar. But we're just going to go ahead and use them today. All right, so again, just as a reminder, I like to go ahead. It shouldn't be necessary in this case. There should be plenty of brood, hopefully, for them to be wanting to cover. But I like to put a queen excluder up underneath the box and in my case I, uh, since I always like to use a slatted rack we'll get the slatted rack on here 
queen excluder on top of that for at least three days or so, maybe a week. Box goes on top of that. And we're ready to go. So I've got my knives, my hive tool, my feather, plenty of rubber bands. This way some, we've got a bucket to put odd bits and scraps of things into. I've got my bucket to rinse my fingers on now and then. I've got my spray bottle of water, because sometimes water is better than smoke. Is vinegar, spray? vinegar spray is behind you on the table there, dear. Let's see, let's just get those out of the way. Fewer things on the table you don't need on the table, the better. All right, let's bring it down and see where we're at. Hopefully, we have a nice young mated queen. Um, yeah, I'm going to start out in a t-shirt here, but I have my jacket close at hand because going over into the bee yard this morning, everybody seems to be a little touchy this morning. It's a beautiful day, but I have to assume that the uh, bees know the weather better than the weatherman does. And uh, they seem a little on edge this morning. Don't know. Low pressure center coming in. Oh, low pressure center is coming in. Okay. See, there's beautiful blue skies and fluffy clouds, but the bees know something's happening. Well, we'll see. I'm too close to you, dear? Yes, dear. Ah, all right. I was just trying to find a level spot there. Rope stangling. All right, so let's see what they've done in the last week. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, see, I didn't think they'd go long. I figured they'd go wide. And they did. Which is good because going wide makes it a lot easier to do this. What's in the middle? Come on, what's in the middle? Well, I'm trying to smoke the bees out the two middle combs here to see if I can see any eggs. And I am not seeing anything here so far. This is not good. Let me just. Uh, no, no, she was. If she was coming back, she'd be back. Uh, 
I know you're not seeing it as well as me, so here I'll turn it this way. And I can't see eggs, but it's been another week if, you know, it's, oh. yeah. I guess we're doing a cutout either way. Well, we would have to do a cutout either way because if I was going to uh, uh, try to merge this with that little nuke over there that we know has a good queen in it, but a very small field force, I would still have to put it in a box. I'm not just going to dump them straight in. You're right, they are. Huh. Okay, they apparently want a new home, so we'll give them a new home. All right. Ladies, you'll give me a spot where I can grab some comb. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, well, resources in the form of a little bit of bee bread and such, yes, but absolutely pristine, clean comb. Here you can come up as close as you want. There's no eggs in that. These girls are just hopeful.
dry as a bone. All you see is the Ys at the back of the cells. And if you're wondering why I did this the way I just did it, it's because I want to take the little pieces over here and hook them on the other side to these two. Honey? Yes, dear. Is that the queen right there? Oh my goodness. Can I get the queen cup? Sure. But she hasn't done anything. Come on, girls, get out of the way. Well, there's a queen. Uh, yep. There she is. Okay. I have good eyes. Yes, you do, dear. Yes, you do. Huh. Well, I just put her inside. Yeah. No, I guess not that way. Yeah. Huh. Well, they have a queen, but she's not doing anything. What's with that? Okay. Well, on the bright side, that means that tonight, when I uh, collect these bees, uh, the foragers that come back and put them in front of the entrance, they will be more than eager to all go in because they'll have the queen's pheromone over there. Although she doesn't perform somehow or other, <laughs> we're just going to end up merging these with uh, that little queen right colony that has very few workers. Yeah, but the thing is, you need to take this camera and look in there. Because by rights, she should be totally being, that, that cage should be covered with bees. It's been like two minutes. They don't seem very interested in her. Okay, let me, you're about, you're about ready to knock. Yeah. I'm still afraid we've got a dud here of a, of a, of a swarm. I mean, it's a handsome swarm. The dud, dud queen, because these girls know their job. And they're doing their job quite well. But the queen doesn't seem to be with the program. Which one? Arrows. I can't worry about the arrows, dear. I have to worry about the uh, spikes. But in this instance, yes, the arrow is going the right direction. All right, 
which one of you is the biggest? I'll take you. Here's your top to bottom. Yes, dear. Before I take the queen cage out, I might want to take a rubber band and put it on here so that I have some place to slide the queen cage in. So, question. Uh -huh. Do you need the queen cage if you have a queen excluder on the bottom? I do not. That's true. <laughs> yep. As... As always, dear, your ability to point out the obvious to me is unparalleled. <laughs> well, in case people didn't hear me. Oh, in case people didn't hear you, you just asked, uh, why do I need a queen cage? queen cage if I have a queen excluder on the bottom? Look how few bees there are on there. We might not actually be yet. Yep. Which means that I do have to keep her in here for a couple of days uh, so that she doesn't want to reorientate and come up here. Hmm. But we are going to have to make a bunch of decisions very quickly. Now, as I say, she, she doesn't, they don't seem terribly interested in her. And I don't know the chances that she's going to go out and come back and come back to where this box is over there when I release her in a few days seems pretty limited to me. Well, we have other swarms and we have other queens. Yeah, yeah, we have uh, many different ways to work to worry about this, but uh, uh, let me just get a another frame in here that I'll not write this second. Excuse me, ladies. Yes, I know. <sighs> Step one. Take out the brick. <laughs> Step two, take out the garbage. But not for long. But again, look how few bees are coming to her. Something is seriously not right. She certainly seems pretty enough. Are you sure that is a queen? Oh, please. Let's look at her again. Really close up. Oh, I'm looking at her really close up. She's pretty. Well, I don't understand your statement. Okay, well, I'm going to move this on the other side of the camera so that it's close up and she can see what I'm talking the about. The camera's on the, your side. I know, dear. One camera. I want you to look. I can't do that. 
You can't switch There's it on no, a video. I wasn't. I don't know what you're I wanted you to see it with your own eyes because you're questioning whether or not that's a queen. Oh, I'm the one who spotted her. Yeah, but now you're questioning yourself, and okay. I don't get that. Okay, now I can tell if she's a queen. Okay. What are you going to do? Are you going to put her in the cage or are you going to release her? Oh, I'm going to release her into there. Okay. No, I don't know that I want to release her. I don't know that I want her involved in this. I want to uh, get these bees into this box so that in a day or so, being queenless, although they already seem to be, the bees can uh, be ma uh, uh, connected with the other colony over there that has a good queen in it, but has almost no uh, worker force. These are swarms. This is what I do my experiments on. Okay. This, you know, it's not like we lack swarms at the moment. If this works, it's going to be terrific. If it doesn't work, we're no worse off than we are right now. So you're planning on, tell us what you're planning to do. I'm planning on getting this box set and putting it, probably doing a paper uh, merge, newspaper merge with a little colony that's over there that has the queen that came out of that frame that was full of queen cells. We haven't, we haven't studied that frame since uh, she emerged, have we? Now, mm -hmm. well, all those cells have holes in the sides of them where, you know, she went in and killed the, killed the other queens, but there's just not much worker force right now in there. And I have a funny feeling these bees would be more than happy to uh, get into the, get her as their new leader. And the worst that can happen is that there is a knockdown, drag out fight. Everybody dies, and I'm down a swarm. Which there's so many of them over there right now, it doesn't really matter. But I don't think that's going to work that way. I think they're going to come in. Just as a comment, if you wonder why I use a feather instead of a bee brush, try doing this with a bee brush. Just the entrance on this side? Yep. Okay. You want to leave it in here at the moment, close it up. Well, i got to set up one more frame. have to have anything in it, it just has to, but might as well just throw them in there.
And for those who think I don't take this seriously enough, well, if you're not having fun, what's the point? <laughs> yeah. And the epitome of not being a commercial beekeeper. Okay, we're getting some balling of her finally. Yeah, none of their hard work is going to waste. Now I have to make the hard decision. Do I let her go? keep this over this way because you know what most of the bees up there are coming down that's what I'm saying if you refer to last week's video they were down for a couple of minutes and they were covering the branches these bees are coming down Unless you don't think she's mated. I just don't think she's mated. She sure looks big enough. If she's not mated, don't you need to release her? Yes, dear. Yeah, okay. I'm going to release her. i got to give this whole thing a shot. Ladies, come on. Come on, I just want you to walk out on your own. I don't want to. Yeah, maybe she's just too dumb. <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to have to resort to the feather. She left. Oh no. Did she leave? Yeah, she left. All right, she's gone. Girls certainly behave themselves nicely. You didn't take one step, did you? Oh, no. No. Oh, my wife just asked me if I took any stings, and I'm like, nah. Nobody, nobody even gave me a harsh buzz. <laughs> Well, I am going to leave them here on the table for the rest of the day. I'm going to go ahead and give them a little sugar water here in a minute. Ladies, come on. Nothing but queen pheromone here. I don't want any alarm pheromone. All right. Move this roof 
for a moment. Okay. The fact that there's not even 150 bees in the air I just think like 30. Floors, floors me. It's like they're immediately finding their way in there, and that's just really remarkable. Really remarkable. Well, I'm going to do that part of it anyway. Uh, kind of you know two minds about this on the one hand they seem to all be coming down anyway but I know that if I put this back up and they congregate and I set the entrance in front of the entrance of that tonight after dark that they will all move right on in and since all of these bees yeah foragers with uh, pollen are coming in down here remarkable see the pollen on this one a moment ago a forager landed right here with that was full of pollen and just walked right on in Look at the, now that's interesting, because that orangish pollen right there is most likely from Brazilian pepper, and normally you'd say, well, this is totally the wrong time of year for Brazilian pepper, but I've been watching Brazilian pepper bloom. Everything is so off kilter here with the weather that uh, some of the Brazilian pepper is blooming months off of uh, schedule. wrap it up all right folks well this is an interesting one i'm glad we decided to film it because it didn't go the way these normally go how about that queen that was something else uh, i'm not going to predict whether or not we're going to end up fusing this one with another one or not but we'll have to wait and see this has been south florida beekeeping with rich another adventure in swarm catching this spring everybody have a great weekend